This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. You will often see in many of the Sailrite videos that we use weights to hold material and patterns in place. Using them is very important for patterning, as the sewing pattern weights help to hold your pattern material in place as you pattern your fabric. They also make it possible to move large pieces on a tabletop surface while still keeping your pattern in place. Place a patterning weight on a zipper and you can easily apply double sided tape or seam stick for canvas along the flange. It helps to keep the zipper nice and flat and taut as you apply the tape. And when you need more zipper, just pull it from underneath the weight keeping the zipper nice and flat. Sandbags also work great for long projects so you can actually move the fabric on a slippery table without the material slipping off and then apply basting tape or do other patterning jobs like we are doing here, creasing the middle of this Genoa sleeve. The size of these sewing pattern weights that Sayrite makes and the weight is perfect for most upholstery and canvas jobs. And we're going to show you how to make these bags. You will find them to be an ultimate time saver and they will make sewing much more fun. Let's get started. Using Duraskrim pattern material, we will make an inner bag. This inner bag will measure 24 inches by 12 inches. We're using the clear acrylic ruler and a Sharpie marker to mark the Duraskrim pattern material so we can cut it out. Onto the Duraskrim pattern material on one short side, the 12 inch side, doesn't matter which, apply seam stick for canvas. This is part number 129. Then along the two long sides next to the side that was basted, apply basting tape to approximately the middle position. We like to break the double sided tape with our fingers rather than use scissors for we find it easier to remove the transfer paper revealing the glue. Now we've removed that transfer paper revealing the glue on the two long sides but not on the short end. Now we'll fold it in half and leave the transfer paper on the end being sure that we work out any wrinkles. Uh, if you have small wrinkles don't worry about it. This again is an inner bag. We're going to sew up these sewing pattern weights with the Sayrite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine. This is a straight stitch and zigzag sewing machine. We'll be sewing it in zigzag and we set the stitch length to approximately 3 millimeters in length. We will sew down the two sides that we basted. We don't obviously have to sew on the folded edge nor do we want to sew on the edge that still has the transfer paper on the double sided tape. We do some reversing at the beginning to lock our stitch in place and we start it on the edge that's actually folded. And when we reach the portion where the double sided tape is, we will do some reversing, not sewing into the double sided tape, just, but just right up to the edge. Now repeat that procedure for the opposite end. Now that the inner bag is made, we need to concentrate on the outer bag. We'll be using top notch 9 fabric for this. And we'll be using a sewing pattern weight to hold our fabric in place so we can pattern it. We will use our clear acrylic ruler yet again and we will pattern this the exact same as we did with the Duraskrim pattern material at 24 inches by 12 inches. No reason to use a hot knife to seal the edge of the fabric. Scissors will work great because all of the edges will be sewn to the inside. Now we will apply basting tape. Uh, part number 129 down the long sides of this pattern piece but only to approximately the center location. We will not apply basting tape along the top. We use the Sayrat Canvas patterning ruler to adhere the basting tape well to the top notch 9 fabric that's available from Sayrite. Peel off the transfer paper and then fold the assembly or the rectangle in half to form a square, basting it together at that location. This creates an open pocket at the top of our sewing pattern weight. Along the top edge at the opening, we will take our clear acrylic ruler and mark a half inch line across the top. This line is a half inch from the opening of the bag. We'll do that on both sides. Now we'll take it over to the sewing machine. Again, we're going to sew the maximum width zigzag 
of about five millimeters and about a four millimeter or three millimeter zigzag stitch length. You can also sew this with a straight stitch. In fact, we will sew a second row of straight stitches on the inside of the zigzag stitches. We did some reversing at the beginning and we will do some reversing here at the end. You can sew to the half inch line or even past the line all the way to the edge of the fabric if you so choose. Repeat that exact same procedure for the opposite end, but leave the opening end, the end that we struck the half inch line on, unsewn at this time. As we mentioned before, you do not have to have a zigzag sewing machine to do this. You could sew this stitch with a straight stitch. Here we're going to use a straight stitch on the inside of the zigzag stitch, mainly so when the bag is turned right side out, we don't see the double sided tape on the outside of the bag. We'll do that on both sides. Now find the inner bag, the one that's made from the Durascrim pattern material, and we can fill it either with rice or sand. Do not fill the bag all the way up. In fact, this is about the right amount. We like our pattern weights to be approximately five to six pounds. This is a preference and not a rule. Now peel off the transfer paper of the double-sided tape and base the top portion of the bag closed. Now take it over to the sewing machine and try to keep the sand at the other end of the bag, which is very difficult of a task and sew some uh, zigzag stitches across the top of the uh, bag or sew two rows of a straight stitch if you do not have a zigzag stitch sewing machine. Turn the fabric bag right side out. Insert your fingers into the two corners to push them completely right side out. And now insert the inner bag full of sand or rice Push the inner bag all the way to the bottom of the outer bag. Don't worry about distributing it evenly within that bag. Just push it down. Now we will use basting tape and baste on the inside edge of the bag so that we can create a single hem all around the perimeter of that opening and then we'll sew it shut. In order to ensure that the basting tape sticks well to the Top Notch 9 fabric, we're going to use the Sayerac Canvas Patterning Ruler. If you don't have that, you can use just a heavy weight to press firmly on the double-sided tape. And now we'll peel the transfer paper off one side of the bag, and we will fold that edge back to approximately a half inch. Even though we're not showing it, it is actually easier to create these hems and apply the basting tape without the sand being in the bag. We can actually create these hems, apply the basting tape, and then insert the sand and then seal it shut. Then we'll do the same for the other side. Now on one side of the single hem we just created, we will take basting tape and baste it there so that we can baste the opening of the bag shut with the double hems directly on top of each other. Then we can take it to the sewing machine and sew it closed. But before we sew it closed, we need to add the serrate tag to the middle of the bag's opening. It makes the bag look very attractive and shows the world that you did it yourself. Now we can close up the patterning weight opening, being sure that the corners are folded in. If you did all this basting and hemming before the sand was inserted, you want to be sure to insert the sand into the bag at this point before you close it up. And now we can take this over to the sewing machine and sew it either in a straight stitch or a zigzag. We believe a zigzag looks best, and it helps to close up the end of the bag well. We did some reversing at the beginning, and we will sew all the way to the other corner and do some reversing there as well. And now our patterning bag, or patterning weight, is complete. Oh, here's a nifty little tool. This is called the battery operated thread burner and you can use it to seal the ends of the thread. 
It uh, heats them, melting them nicely, creating almost like a mushroom head on the ends of the thread. It is not necessary, but uh, I've grown to love this tool, and I reach for it usually on all of my projects. Coming up is the material lists for all of the supplies that are needed to make these patterning weights. We've chosen to use Top Notch 9 fabric from Sayerite, but other marine grade fabrics would also work well. For more free videos like this, check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.